No commons can be seen in grand isolations from its larger context, especially government policies and corporate power. These power relationships often affect how well a commons can perform. You see, the commons is often an attractive, more self-contained alternative to both government and markets. And so many politicians and corporations would just as soon that the commons not reach a certain level of critical social support. A commons might become a competitor to the state and to the market by commanding its own power, its own provisioning system, and its own constituency base. This is often seen as a threat by those in power. They correctly see commons as a competing type of social order, provisioning, and ethics. The commons framework tends to move us away from narratives of human progress based on markets, technology, and consumerism, and towards a different order of human progress. So by providing a different imaginary for thinking about the future, the commons redirects attention and allegiances away from mar conventional markets and their ideas of politics and progress. And it validates the possibility of self-reliance and autonomy as opposed to dependency on global markets. So to talk about the commons is to open up a new kind of conversation. Many powerful institutions and elites would prefer not to have this kind of conversation. They often fear the commons and want to shut it down. To put it in economist terms, they see the practice of commoning as stealing market share. It can also spark political struggles over what po public policies should prevail. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video about market enclosures. But for now, let's talk about how enclosures are a process by which market players, often in collusion with governments, try to uh, privatize and commodify commons, turning, their raw, uh, turning them into raw market inputs and products that can be sold. And then whatever can't be monetized is then dumped back into the commons for someone else to take care of. But short of outright enclosure, let's talk more specifically about how exogenous factors may affect the capacity of commons to work well. First, because the law of liberal democracies are generally focused on individuals and individual rights, especially with respect to private property and uh, market activity, governments often don't have laws to protect the commons. It's presumed that the market is the only significant engine of value creation, and it's presumed that the individual and not the collective is the only meaningful unit needing legal protection. And so the commons has little or no standing in law and little protection. The so-called free market, in fact, has lots of forms of support from government. It's got subsidies and legal privileges and research and uh, development budgets. There are also regulatory agencies to help consumers trust the safety and reliability of markets. And governments provide all sorts of legal uh, limits on legal liability for corporations. So the market has plenty of support, but that's not always true of the commons. But the commons is generally invisible in public policy, and so it doesn't have the support of government budgets or government agencies or law. This makes it harder for commons to form in the first place and to finance themselves and to protect themselves and their resources from enclosure. In countries where there are tyrants or corrupt governments and no democratic civil society, the hostility to commons can be even worse. Many African governments are currently facilitating a vast international land grab by selling vast quantities of land to international investors and even sovereign states like China, Korea, and Saudi Arabia. Even though these lands have been used as customary commons by indigenous peoples and subsistence communities for generations. In short, the commons as an institutional and social form worth protecting doesn't have the recognition and standing that it deserves. This is starting to change in some nations, such as India and Italy, where there's a growing interest in protecting commons as commons. But it remains a problem in most regions of the world. Where a commons can protect itself from exogenous forces through the creative use of law, they can often achieve great things. One of the best examples is Linux, the free and open source computer operating system. By ensuring that all innovations in the commons of software code 
remain available in the commons and can't be appropriated by private corporations, Linux has helped fight the Microsoft monopoly over the computer desktop, and it's made software markets more open, competitive, and user-friendly. The local food movement is another realm in which various types of commons, community-supported agriculture, farmers' markets, permaculture, slow food, have helped people escape the dominance of industrial agriculture and reclaim some control over the types and quality of food they can buy. This is especially an issue in the United States where so much of the food system is dominated by large corporations who raise animals in appalling conditions and produce foods with dangerous chemicals and GMOs.